Okay, we got our parts back from the machine shop. Uh, this is the head we had redone. They, uh, I, I don't believe they changed. I think they just reground the, reground the valves. I don't know if they're new valve springs or not. There's there's new valve guides in there. They put new freeze plugs in. Uh, come around the other side here. You can see they, they've machined the surface. Probably, I don't know if there's new valve guides, but they at least ground the valve guides and the valves to all mate. And we got this, this is our the kit, vantage engine parts. Uh, kit consists of a sleeve. Let's see, here's the sleeve. The piston. It's a crater top. See that little cone in there? That's where the injector sprays and helps break up the stuff. These ones here are flat top. Our other one's got indents on the case where the valves actually go. So and you get new pistons. You get new piston rings or the, the uh, wrist pen that's called. That goes through the top of your connecting rod here. Uh, I got this little box here. This is your rings. See there, there's three rings. All wrapped up. Hopefully I can figure out which one goes where. I know the oil one goes on the bottom, but the other two, I'll figure it out. The other kit was all wrapped in plastic and it showed what position they go in. These are your bearings for your connecting rod. They're right. Yeah, I guess they're right. I'm going to the bottom of your connecting rod. These are your main bearings, for your mains. Some of them should have been grooved. Yeah, the grooved one for the top, smooth one for the bottom, and your uh, thrust bearing. That keeps the whole thing from rocking side to side. You also get these gaskets. This is your head gasket kit, your intake. Your head gasket, your intake. These are gaskets for your injectors. These are little brass washers going on your injectors. Your exhaust manifold gaskets. Uh, I'm not sure where that goes. I'm sure I'll figure it out when I go to put everything back together. Oil pan gasket. There's also there's also uh, a little bag of goodies here. I'm not sure what everything is, where everything goes, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. Oh, I know what that one gasket goes to. Right there. Wow, that's going to be fun to put in. That's your valve cover. But that's what all comes in the kit. Uh, I'm not sure just how much this one was. The last one we did, it was either $1,700 or $2,000 for everything. My brother thinks it was $300 to do the head. And he didn't know if it was $1,700 for the kit or whether it was $1,700 total. He couldn't remember off the top of his head. But yeah, between, between $15 and $2,000 for a rebuild kit for everything. I got the pistons all, wrist pins all out of the piston. Connecting rods, I got them all cleaned up. These, them are your mains. Keep everything in order. This is a mongrel engine. <laughs> it's a Cummings engine. Right there you can see West Germany. The heads. The mains. Right there. USA. Connecting rods. Brazil, the pistons that were in it were from Brazil. These actually don't say on the new ones. The other ones, you look down the side, it said Brazil. Yeah, now we'll get assembling everything. I can't get it too much done because I need 
I broke our ring compressor and my brother has yet to pick one up so I just called him told him better get a ring compressor because I'm going to be needing it. But I can get the mains in and I can get the pistons assembled ready to put in and I can get the sleeves in. So, well, let me get at it. Alright, let's show you how to put these mains in. Look at this way. Where I stick it up in there, you see? It does say back on the one side, so they do go a specific way. That's because this little notch right here. And I'll show you what that's for. The one with the groove and the oil holes, that goes on your top. This one goes into your bracket here. You notice on the end there. Man, this camera's hard to use. It doesn't line up with the, what you're looking at. Notice this little tab there. Your little notch right there. You uh, get that lined up right in there. Just push that right down in. Push it right down so it's flush on your front and back. You can see that little notch right there. Lines right up. That locks your bearing from spinning. Ever hear the term spun bearing? Well, what'll happen is that little tab will it'll bite so hard that this will spin and it'll rip that tab out and your bearing will actually spin in your yoke or whatever you want to call this and the, and the housing up above. Now, let me get set up and I'll get you underneath here and I don't know how good you're going to be able to see because I ain't going to be able to see the screen where I'm going to put you. Okay, let me get you set up right. Right there. Hopefully you can see that. Now, take your bearing. Ooh, I got a little bit too much on there. You wipe some oil on there. You want to use a sticky oil like a gear lube. They make assembly lube. Uh, I'm using chainsaw bar oil. It's good and sticky. So it's going to stay there when you get while you're assembling your engine. So when you start it up, it's not a dry start. Set your bearing right in there and get it started. Make sure your tabs, the last part you push up in. Ah. Some of them roll up in it easier. Huh? Get a little. Oops, a little off side here. Square. Take your other thing, make sure you got the back side back. Get her up in there, you can line her up. Get your bolt started. Once I get the bolt started so I know where to go, I'll take a hammer or something and just tap it a little bit. It gets her up in there. If you can still turn your bolts free, you know you're in the right spot. Now I'm using a drill with a socket extension on it. see how that is. Now I'll uh, I'll go through them all, get them all in. This next one's the one that takes that thrust bearing. I'll get them all in and then I'll have to torque it. Right now I'm not sure to torque specs. My brother was at a parts dealer today and he was supposed to get the torque specs and he forgot to get them. Something I don't know if I've mentioned yet. This is the bearing I just put in. This bearing here I need to take out. When I remove these bearings, I broke them all loose, but I always leave two in. If your tractor is going to be setting their engine, car engine, whatever, is going to be setting an extended period of time with the crank in it, 
You always want to leave a couple of bearings in to hold it. Otherwise it'll be putting weight on your front and rear main seal. And that's not good for the seal. So you should always leave a couple of bearings in until you're ready to assemble it. And then you can take them out, clean them up, put your bearings in, put them back in. Okay, while I'm at it, I thought I'd show you how to pull these out of here. So I don't think I got video of that. I've removed my bolts. Let me get that drip oil before it drips right on the camera. And I just take a hammer and tap them a little bit. Loosen them up. Sometimes you can take a bar or something stick them in there and wiggle them a little bit. These ones come out pretty easy. Pull that down. That's your main bearing yoke. Now, your bearing, to get that bearing out, they make a special tool. I just use an old putty knife. Get in there. Slide right up around. Put a little more. Let's get them started. They usually come pretty good because these are the war. These ones are war. See, that one's rolling around on its own. Get it halfway around. Drop them down. Simple as that. That's the old bearing.